Salat wa salam ala rashna fi al-mursaleen Sayyidina maulana sharifina abibuna muhammad Imamuna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salam Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi Wa man taba bi insani ila yawmi zilzaw Ayu ala akwat fi din Allah wa din al-Islam Fakula salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi it is after I sought refuge in Almighty Allah from Shaitan the Accost, the one whom he created himself, and the one whom he has said will lead the evildoers to the fire of hell. We pray Almighty Allah will save us from it. I seek Allah's choicest blessings on Noble Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his household, on his companions, and all those of us who follow the guidance of Al-Islam. Um, I'll first of all thank the Admonition Islamic Center for this privilege again. Uh, I don't know why my brother keeps inviting me, um, but I, I, I believe it's out of the love and the opportunity that this provides. First of all, let me also thank um, Auntie Mo. Uh, we always look up to her from afar. Auntie Mo and Uncle Fala, they, they are people you call um, role models, people you can look up to and say, I want to be like. Uh, Auntie Mo, a lot of people did not know, was very fiery when she was in, in Guarantee's Trust Bank. And we used, to look up, we used to look up to her to say, you have a Muslim and who is also a professional. And that has always been my watchword in, in my career within the information technology sector. How do I maintain my Islamic outlook and also be very professional so that when I sit in board meetings or I attend uh, execution meetings and they're asking questions, and I'll give an example. There have been times we wanted to launch um, Ramadan campaign back then at Nokia, and somebody came up with a particular um, creative. And my boss said, oh, have you shown it to call her to verify, to be sure that we are passing the right message? So for me, if you don't understand Islam, and you, you are not also balanced in your profession, nobody will give you that kind of opportunity to be able to say, oh, you need to verify. If that thing went out and it was not the right thing, at the end of the day, somebody will point and say, and we have a Muslim there. And at the end of the day, they, they put out something that was not right. I've been asked to talk about how do we market the perfect message of an Islam. And I'm glad that Antimo went forward um, talking about the, the quality of education uh, that we have today. And I must say that it is a challenge. The gap still exists. And that is what is demarketing Islam today. So, and I'm glad the, the organizers put the topic perfectly. They said the perfect message of Islam. So Islam is already complete. The message is already perfect. The question is how do we now market this message that is already complete and perfect? In marketing, they tell us that if you already have a product that is perfect, a product that is complete, there's very little you need to do to market that product because the product will sell itself. So I always have this challenge with my marketing colleagues when I sit as a salesperson and I tell them that, look, this product is good, it will sell itself. They will say, no, we still need to market it. That's why today, the likes of Coca-Cola, whether we like it or not, people will still buy Coca-Cola. But Coca-Cola is still putting a lot of effort in marketing that product. 
even though it is selling even faster than water today. So the challenge is that Islam itself is already perfect. The message that Islam is coming with is already perfect. But as Muslims, two things have happened to us. Muslims have demarketed Islam and non-Muslims have told a different story of Islam. What we call the narrative of Islam. Today the narrative of Islam is that you know, when you when you go to certain events and I have the privilege of speaking at conferences. Some few weeks back I was speaking to students at um, Federal University of Agriculture at Belkota. And it got to a point where we, it was a three days academy for somebody that talked about mentorship. It was a three days academy and, um, and I was glad that more than half of the people at that academy were Muslims. And when it gets to the time of Salah, because I'd arranged the training in such a way that once it's time of Zoo, we already have a break. So we take a 15 minutes break, then we come back and follow up with the, uh, with the next activity. When it gets to four o'clock, we have a tea break, and so that the Muslims in the class can actually go for salat. We didn't have where we're going to pray in that particular environment, and we asked, okay, so where, where is the Qibla? So they went out. I didn't know what was happening. So they were asking for where was the Qibla, and somebody said, oh, this is the way. This is how where you face for the Qibla, and they started. They were going. They started praying. So I quickly rushed to join them. And I saw one sister, I said, why are you not joining them? She said, she said ah, she's waiting for them to bring the Qibla finder so that she's sure that this is the way that they're going to face. And I told her, even if they are wrong at, at, at now, their prayer is still accepted. Even if you now bring the Qibla finder and we now realize that we face the wrong place, the prayer is still going to be accepted. So go and do your ablution and join them. So we joined by the time we were going to pray, as we realized that we faced the wrong place, we corrected it and we still prayed our prayer. So that shows you, and I, I said to her, the Kibla finder, tell, you need, for you to even talk about the Kibla finder, you also need to understand what a compass is. What is the true knot and what is the magnetic knot? And she looked at me. And I said, with the Kibla finder, you're already treating the Kaaba as a single line. And the Kaaba is not a single line. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us between the East and the West there's a Kaaba, which, which means that 180 degrees, there's a way, there's somewhere you can face. So if I face like this, if I face like this, if I within that 180 degrees, and this is only as a result of knowledge. And you see Muslims fighting on something as petty as that. Why the big task of understanding the classical Islam and using it to explain the contemporary issues that we have today? Is still staring us in the face and that is the challenge we have with education so we need to not just learn we need to unlearn and we need to relearn as Muslims before we can say we want to start marketing the perfect message of Islam today the narrative of Islam has been told by non-Muslims in a way that doesn't befit us as Islam today I feel furious when somebody says Islamic states and they said ISIS is Islamic there's nothing Islamic about ISIS there's nothing Islamic about Boko Haram because tell me if you say western knowledge is, is Haram how do, you, how do you explain to a Muslim whether they should invest in debentures or whether they should invest in shares when you don't even know what is the debenture and what, what is shares and what is the Islamic ruling on both of them and that's why our, my own mentor, Sheikh Abdullakim Ibn Abayam, used to tell us that, look, you must be the best when it comes to Islamic knowledge. You must be the best when it comes to Western education. Because when you sit with the likes of Antimu and Uncle Fola, you have something to say. Because when they are talking about return on investment, you can explain how this business would yield the right amount of profit when is the when is the break when is the point where you break even when they when they start questioning you in the boardroom you must be able to stand in front of them 
when you go to a conference and Wale Shoyinka is speaking, you must be able to understand what he's saying and be able to intellectually engage. And when the likes of Imam Abraham and Hamad who sit here and are talking about Islam, you have something to contribute. That is what we call a balanced Muslim. That is what we call a Muslim that can market Islam. A Muslim that can be an ambassador for Islam. A Muslim that can truly believe in Islam. And as Muslims, somebody told me a story. He said, look, this is our case. There was a circus. Circus is where people come and they enjoy uh, what is happening within the circus. And there was... Um, so they had uh, elephants, tigers, lions that would perform. And they've been, they've been tra they trained one of the lions to an extent that the lion, when they say, open your mouth, the lion will open his, his mouth. They'll put a ball, somebody will put his head, everybody will clap, and all that. So nearby the circus, there was a jungle. One day, one of the lions in the jungle strayed and straight towards the, where the circus was. And he saw, watched them perform uh, all the things that was happening in the circus. And he saw the lion. That they asked the lion to open his or her mouth. The lion will open the mouth. The man will put his head. They will tell the lion to dance. The lion will dance. And this lion was at the back watching. And he was in a state of shock. The lion went back into the jungle and was worried. That what do I do? Ah, am I not the same lion? So one day the lion came out of the jungle. They were performing the circus. Ran into the circus. And everybody in the circus started running. All the animals, the, lion, the, 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 the donkey, the horses, the, the, the elephants, the people. Everybody started running away. The lion started chasing. The lion that was in the circus also was running. The lion chased after this lion, dragged him into the jungle, took him to a river, and said, look inside this river and tell me what you see. The lion said, ah, it's water. He said, look inside this river properly and tell me what, okay, I see some fishes. The lion roared and said, look into this river and tell me what you see. Oh, I see myself. And he said, you are a lion. And this is what it means to be a lion. This is the mannerisms of lions. We are the king of the jungle. We don't accept less. And the lion realized this. As I living in the jungle, as I learning the mannerisms of, of the lions. That is the case of us as Muslims. We must see ourselves as those lions. We have the perfect message of Islam. Islam has a say on every single thing of our life. That's why somebody say, when somebody says, oh, your religion is Islam, I say, my way of life is Islam. From when a child is born, Islam tells us what to do. When a child is going to be named, Islam has a say. When somebody is going to, um, when a child is sick, Islam has a say. When the child is going to, to school, Islam has a say. When, <laughs> take beer. All praises and gratitude is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the controller of all affairs. Admonition Islamic Center ever express our solidarity with Nigerians of the critical moment of our nationhood due to the scourge of COVID-19 globally. We especially feel for the Muslim Ummah who from all indications will have to start the 2020 Ramadan season in complete lockdown. There won't be tarawi, no fiscal deficit sessions, no joint iftar, no itikaf, and possibly no idel fitri prayers. For the same reason, the AIC is supposed to be 10 years this year and arrangements have been concluded to feature 10 guest speakers for 10 hours at the prestigious National Art Theatre Igomu Lagos on Saturday 2nd May 2020. But by Allah's will, it will not hold again. We take solace in the fact that Allah is the best of all planners and He alone knows best. We beseech Allah to spare our lives till next year's Ramadan 2021, inshallah. We pray for Allah's forgiveness that Allah is the world. 
world put an end to this pandemic and give us the privilege to be together for his sake again to witness more Ramadan in good health. Amen. Inshallah, our focus this 2020 Ramadan in our own little way is to provide food stuff to the fasting Muslims who are in need. May your rewards be great with Allah as you join us to make this dream a reality. For inquiries, call 0802-335-5870, 0808-690-5870 or 0708-378-7920. Account details, Admonisha Islamic Center, Bank, Stalin Bank. Account number 050-021-1796. Lukman Adekombi for AIC. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan. going to eat there's a prayer for it when you are going to the toilet there's a prayer for it when you are going on a journey there's a prayer for it when there's when you are going for in fact in the sufi sect they say when your shoe cuts and you are going to repair your shoe there's a prayer for it take beer when you are going to have sexual intercourse with your eye there's a prayer for it so islam has perfected everything islam has a say on everything that we do that message of Islam is already perfect. It is we Muslims that are not perfect, but we strive for that perfection. And when Nana Aisha Anya, was asked, what is the character of the prophet? She replied and said, the character of the prophet is the Quran. When you see the prophet walking, is a walking Quran. I didn't understand this. I'm a student of branding. I studied branding marketing. Both inside... In, within and outside of Nigeria and I didn't understand this that the concept of branding because everything Islam has a say on it the law of contract in Surah to Baqarah Allah already explains what you do when you want to con- when you want to go into contractual ag- agreement it is clear it's the longest surah, uh, longest ayah in the Quran when it talks about contracts when it comes to inheritance there is a complex mathematical formula that if you are not, you must understand mathematics as a scholar before you can even explain the law of inheritance of Tekbir. So how, can, how come they say we Muslims are not knowledgeable? Before, be, you can't share the inheritance of a man who has said, please do it according to Sharia of Allah. If you don't understand mathematics, because there is one-sixth of, one-third of to thought of as I am today I studied engineering, I did numerical analysis I had a book called Teraja Teraja I still don't understand that mathematics and somebody will look at our scholars and say they are not knowledgeable it is we that have not gained the right level of knowledge everything Islam has talked about I'll give another example in Surah to Nur, Quran 24 Allah was talking about the state of the unbelievers and he said the state of the unbelievers is like waves upon waves like when you go into the depth of the ocean when they look at their hands they can't see anything and I asked myself did Rasulullah wasallam go to diving school because when you go to a certain depth in the sea it is actually dark you can't see anything the concept of electricity is also explained in Surah to know the concept of how a baby evolves is explained in Surah Al Hajj. So, everything, the concept of trade, Allah has already explained it. The concept, concept of aeroplanes, Allah says they will come by air, by land, take beer. So, it worries me that Muslims were not the first to build an aeroplane. So, everything Allah has explained in it somebody said the concept of information technology wireless wi-fi is explained in the quran in surah Nam, when allah was talking about uh, uh, prophet Sulaiman, the way he had the way he could communicate with the ants that is information technology that is wireless technology that build don't think it's only abijah that can talk to people in far away places so somebody now asked me so did the, the, the Quran talk about branding. I said, ah, uh-uh. in fact, the first surah of the Quran talks about branding. 
And when I go for interviews, you can also use it to explain your CV. Take bill. So, and Timo, some people will be using this for you when they come for interviews. <laughs> so, Allah says, I was be lay me na shaitan in rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. See, in marketing, there's what we call classical conditioning and subliminal seduction. Allah is, if you want, let me explain what classical conditioning is and subliminal seduction is. If you go on Third Milan Bridge and you see that advert of Milo, 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 from the beginning to the end, you go on the Korodu Road, you see Milo all the way. The moment you enter Ojuo Market, the first thing you want to buy is Milo because it has conditioned your mind to Milo. Allah has done that to us five times daily. Allah does that to us. He has conditioned our mind because we need to recite that, this surah at every point in time before we pray. And He has conditioned our mind that if you understand this surah, you understand this essence of life. So Allah says, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Allah explains Himself. Allah starts with His own name. So when you are going to have a product, you are going to sell a product, that product must have a name. City of Knowledge Academy. It, has, it must have a name. You can't say, I have a school, no name. Allah has taught us that anything that, has, that you are going to market, that you are going to share, must have a name. Allah says, I start in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. He now continues, Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. If you don't praise yourself, who will praise you? And Timo says our school is the best. Well, I think it's the best in, in Ijebode. I'm from Ijebode, so I'm proud of that. If you don't praise yourself, who will praise you? If you are not proud of yourself as a Muslim, who, who would be proud of you as a Muslim? Who would be proud of you as a Muslim? But Allah has taught us. You start. So when I go for interviews and they ask me, who are you? I tell them my, my name and I praise myself. And I tell them what I've done in the past. Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen You praise yourself. You tell people who you are. What you have. Ar-Rahman rahim And you tell them your skills, your values. Allah says it's Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Our great Sheikh, Sheikh Adam al Nori says that when Allah says it's Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the whole world, Ajake Ayyabi, he would bless the whole world. Ashake or he would select people that he will have Ramahon in the year after. That is an attribute of Allah. But Allah knows that some of us can have that be merciful, some of us can be that gracious. What did Allah do? And it's a fundamental concept in marketing and branding. You have to distinguish yourself. Maliki Yaumidin. There can never be any Maliki Yaumidin. Take bill. There can never be any Maliki Yaumidin. Because even the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said on that day, he himself would, would tremble in the presence of Allah. So he says, Maliki Yaumidin. Then he now continues. Then you now explain why they should trust you. Why people should trust you as a Muslim. Why people should trust going to CK. Why people should trust buying things from Admonition Islamic Center. And you need to explain where you will get to if you trust me. And you also need to explain people who do not, who have not followed that path, what happens to them. That is branding 101 in a nutshell. If you are going for an interview, that, that is the framework of how I answer questions. When somebody is asking me, so what can you do for this company? 
This is the direction I want to take your company. This is the direction I want to take this product. This is the direction I am. I'm going to go as a Muslim. Oh, what, are, what is your unique value proposition? Ah, I remember Maliki, Yao, Midin. So as Muslims, we need to understand Islam. And we don't have any excuse anymore. When we're talking about um, education, I'll still come back to that. Because I say I have very limited time. But I'll quickly go to what are the things that we need to do as Muslims to market this perfect message of Islam. My mentor used to tell us that, look, the five pillars of Islam is complete. There's nothing you can do about it. That you want, if, you don't, if you don't practice the five pillars of Islam, Allah will still punish you on it. So you better practice it. But there are five other things that if you do them very well, at the end of the day, they will complement the five pillars of Islam and fulfill what Allah says, Rabbana atina fi dunia sanatan wa fila akhirati asanatan wa kina azaban nar. Allah says we should look for this world so that we can get the year after and save ourselves from the fire of hell. Quickly, he said, look, the five things is, as a Muslim, and for you to be able to market the message of Islam, you must have that deep spirituality. And he said, spirituality is something that is a step. You can get to the peak of your spirituality. The peak of your spirituality is that you can talk to anything and you can talk to any situation. Take beer. A lot of Muslims don't understand this. That's why when they run into a small problem, they go the other way. And they go to people who call themselves Alufa. But if you really understand spirituality in its essence, Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah said that in understanding Islamic spirituality, he said, a pure thought will never contradict a divine revelation. And he explained, he said there was a companion of the prophet who made it a point of duty that he would not miss the first raka of every salat. That was his own policy to Allah. And one day he got, a, he got a, uh, engaged with his parents and he couldn't, he was about to go for a particular salat and he couldn't meet up. So he started running to the mosque. You know, I remember another hadith of the prophet that you don't run into salat. So he slowed down again. And he has never missed. Let me repeat. He has never missed the first raka. I didn't say he didn't miss the salat. He didn't miss the first raka of the salat. So he started running. He slowed down again as I walking. By the time he got to the... He was about getting to the mosque. They had gone to Ruku. And you know once they come from Ruku, he has missed that first raka. Ah, he said, Oh Allah, I've never missed a first raka before. Please don't let me miss this first raka. Then he continued walking to the mosque, got to the, and guess who was praying, who was leading the salat? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was in the ablution center performing his ablution. As he was performing his ablution, they were on ruku. Since when he walked into the mosque, they'd been on ruku. The prophet tried to come up. Allah sent down the angels to use their wings to hold down the head of the prophet. The prophet couldn't come up. He performed his ablution, went into the mosque. The prophet tried again. He couldn't come up. Then he says, Allahu Akbar. He joined the salat. He didn't miss the first raka. Immediately he did his takbir. The, the prophet stood up. And for the first time in the history of Islam, the prophet said, Semi Allahu liman hamida. The Muslims never used to say Semi Allahu liman hamida. This companion rose up and replied the prophet, Tekbir. Amdan kathiran toiban mubarak and fi. And they went into sujood. And after they finished praying, normally the prophet would do dua. He turned immediately and asked, who was that person that said that thing? The companion out of fear stood up and said, I was the one. The prophet said, by Allah, he saw the angels rushing to carry that statement up to Allah. And that's how it has become part of our salah today. 
no divine, and is a pure thought. And that is what deep spirituality does. We've been told by in, in Syria that Saad ibn Abi Waqqas, before he says, Allah, Allah has already accepted his prayer. So that is spirituality. The second one is intellectuality. And this is the one that relates to the topic um, Antimo talked about, about education. Today, as Muslims, we don't have any excuse. Our challenge has become, our, our situation has become tougher. And like one of my friends will say, we need to accelerate. We don't need to, we can't catch up. So we need to move faster. So when it comes to intellectuality, we need to build our knowledge of Western education as well as Islamic education. Today, I see the banner of my school outside, Islamic Online University. They provided us the opportunity. I'm taking a bachelor's degree in Islamic studies after taking a BS in engineering. But I won't, I won't have that opportunity if the likes of Abu Amina Phillips did not create that environment for us. If we keep, continue to complain that we don't have time, we don't have time. But that environment exists. It's just for us to register. You can memorize the entire Quran. They have a global, global online mem Quran memorization. And if you have memorized the Quran that you want an ijazah, they will organize for you to have the ijazah. So what is the excuse? Today we have a school, and I'm going to do some small marketing for them, at Tenzil in the Korodu. And Tenzil school is one school that when they showed me their report card, they had three report cards. One for the secular education, one for Arabic studies, and one for Quranic memorization. The kids, before they attend, they would have memorized a substantial part of the Quran. One of my brothers says he was competing with his daughter. He said he has given up. And this is, this is Anustas. He said he has given up. The rate at which the, the daughter was memorizing the Quran. And the daughter was not missing her A's in all the secular works. So it shows that it is possible for you to combine these two. Intellectualism is very key. Somebody once said, look, how, if you're an imam, and if somebody comes to you and says, um, imam, there's, there's a woman whose egg was taken from her. And the husband fertilized the egg with his palm. And they put the egg in another woman. The question is, the, the, woman, the other woman gives birth to the child, and the child grows up. Who does the child inherit? Oh, so it means that you need to understand genetic engineering, first of all, as an imam, then understand the Islamic law of inheritance before you can explain this phenomenon. So, we have gone past the days of where you are one-sided. You have to balance both so that you have an, you have, uh, an edge uh, in the world out there. The third one is social politics. We need to be involved as active citizens in, the, in what is happening around us. Something as simple as joining the residence association of your street, the CDA, and have a say in what happens within your community. So that the day somebody is going to run for office, you can say, no, 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 no. They will come to the mosque and ask the imam and do a presentation on why they are running for office. So that we are not part of the crowd. I'm trying to summarize as quickly as possible. The fourth one is economic development. Today, as Muslims, it, it saddens me. And you see it a lot during this Ramadan. You go to mosque, and I'm a firm believer that a lot of Asalatu needs to merge. We need to do a lot of mergers and acquisitions for them. Because you walk on a street in Mushi on a Sunday morning, within 100 meters, you have three Asalatu. All doing the same thing. Why? Because somebody, people are going to come and drop money. So it's all poverty. And today we keep emphasizing on education, education. Oh, people should go and work in multinationals. A lot of us working in multinationals want to get out of multinationals. Because they don't give us back our time. So entrepreneurship education is something that as Muslims we also need to build as well. How can we start building a lot of small businesses? Because you know, if one person builds one small business, it has the potential of employing five to ten other Muslims. And that way, they continue to build our community. That way, we won't talk about poverty. At a point in the history of Islam, they brought zakat. There was nobody to give zakat to. At a point in the lifetime of Islam. So economic development is very key. 
And the, the only way we can do that is to start building entrepreneurship education into the life of Muslims. Then the final one is our physical well-being. Gone are the days when they used to say, Olen Tel Afa. There is no Olen that is telling Afa anymore. Everybody needs to be not just security conscious, but also have that physical well-being. And I, I, was, I was discussing with my wife one day, and we're, we're asking ourselves, if we wanted to learn how to swim today, where can we go? And that is an entrepreneurial opportunity for So we're asking us today who wants to learn how to swim. Who wants to learn how to Who wants to talk? Who wants to have physical exercise? Which the professor of Sola Alaska said, a strong Muslim is better than a weak Muslim. But there's no opportunity today. Where can they go? Where there will be non-Muslim men there, where there is a swimming pool. And a Muslim needs to learn how to swim. There's an address to that. The little Muslim men has to. Subhanallah, Jika, Rabbil Aizat, Ya Allah, Ya Sifu, Wa Salaamu Ala.